Hi, my name is Dr. Promise Olomo, Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist, CRNA. I'll be delivering an instructional video on the components and steps for endotracheal intubation. The target audience for this presentation are beginners in the skills for endotracheal intubation. It could be respiratory therapists, beginning EMTs, paramedics, or anesthesia students. The context for this presentation is non-emergent intubation, meaning it's done in a controlled environment. Endotracheal intubation is a placement of an endotracheal tube through the glottic opening. So, this is the anatomy of the airway. So, this is what we are trying to achieve, placing the tube in the oropharynx, which will then go right into the glottic opening. It will be secured there and inflated, um, which holds it in place. The objectives for the learners for this presentation is that at the end of this video, learners will be able to list the components of endotracheal intubation and describe the steps or the process of endotracheal intubation. Our control setting today is the operating room and here are the steps. So the five steps are preparation, patient positioning, pre-oxygenation, intubation, and a confirmation of the location or placement of your endotracheal tube. We start with preparation. Preparation, this right here is the anesthesia gas machine. So ideally it's been checked according to standards of practice and we know it's ready to go and fully functional. Then. The equipments that we would need are an endotracheal tube right there. This is a 7O tube. It has a, a balloon at the end and it has a 10cc syringe attached to it, which we will use to inflate and hold the balloon in place beneath the glottic opening. This is a blade. There are different kinds of blade for endotracheal intubation, but this is a MAC blade and it's a MAC 3. These are adjunct airway, this is an oral airway, which can be used in case you have the tongue falling back for a patient with a large neck um, or sleep apnea um, or, um, or you're having trouble being able to move air, this can help as an adjunct. And the last part of our preparation here is our medications that we would use for induction, which is how we attain intubating conditions here in your larynx. Normally there's a gag reflex there that anything that goes down, patients cough, people cough, but when we give medication, it takes away sensation there, puts the patient to sleep, and that way we can place the breathing tube. So fentanyl, lidocaine, propofol, rocuronium. We also have succinylcholine here, but we'll I'm not planning to use it in this case. We're going to do a standard um, endotracheal tube placement. So that is preparation. The next step is positioning. Patient is in the room. Patient is on the bed, a flat surface, the bed in this case. So we have a little mannequin here simulating the patient. So I have the head of the bed elevated a little bit into what's called the help position head elevated laryngoscopy position. And this way, I also have a mask or a circuit here with which we will accomplish the next step. So ideally, the tragus of the ear, right here along your ear, is where it has to line up with the sternum, right here, your chest. So if you have that, it helps align the axis of the airway, the oropharyngeal, the pharyngeal and the laryngeal axis are all aligned. That way the endotracheal tube can go right into the glottic opening. So patient, we've had our preparation done. We've positioned our patient. And now we'll go ahead and pre-oxygenate the patient. So we turn on our oxygen here 
at a relatively high flow because we want to fill the patient's lungs with oxygen, which helps buy us apneic time. Because once we give the medication, patients stop breathing. But we want to fill up their lungs already with oxygen so that when they stop breathing, they have reserve. We also simultaneously get rid of nitrogen, which is about 78% of your air mixture. So we displace nitrogen, we fill it with oxygen. So to accomplish pre-oxygenation, you may have an assistant for this, but in this case, we can do it ourselves by putting a face strap on your patient. So right there, make sure patient is comfortable and it's not, they're not claustrophobic and we tell them to take deep breaths and they start taking deep breaths and that's pre-oxygenation. We should ideally be done for about five minutes. So your patient has been adequately pre-oxygenated. What next? We're gonna go ahead and intubate the patient. So we have an IV connected to the patient, which is flowing and is hooked up. So we get our alcohol wipe over here. We clean the port right here for the IV, following aseptic techniques, making sure we don't contaminate the patient. So patient has been, has been pre-oxygenated for five minutes and we go through the sequence administering fentanyl weight base, administering lidocaine, administering propofol in this case, and we hold on. Once we allow the medication to work, eventually the patient's volume will decrease on the monitor chest rise and fall will slow as the patient as the medication kicks in in which case we take over ventilation for the patient in a situation like this we will have a mask on from the beginning we would also have gloves on for this procedure so that we don't contaminate the machine with oral substance from the patient so we Go ahead and help the patient using your left hand in this way. Using your left hand, you would hold the mask in place. The medicine is in and you will use your right hand. That green bag right there is your bag mask, your bag. And there's a valve connected to it at the machine right here. So oxygen filling this bag will start to manually take over breath as your patient stops respiratory effort. Once we help, once we know that we can move oxygen through the patient, we will go ahead and give the last medication, rocuronium here, which is a muscle relaxant or temporary paralysis, so that the opening of the glottic opening can stay open for us while we place the breathing tube. Because there are so many nerves here that naturally protect gag reflex, cough reflex that protects the airway. But we've given medication to subdue that reflex and this way we can place the breathing tube. So we give rocuronium and we can connect a twitch monitor or a nerve stimulator to the appropriate place on the patient's face right here, which will help monitor the nerves. It's well correlated with sensation in your larynx. Or we use the pharmacology of the drug, rocuronium, about 90 seconds. And after 90 seconds, as we continue to manually take over breath, it should become easier to ventilate your patient as you squeeze our bag over here with reserve of oxygen. So once we, 90 seconds have passed and we feel patient is ready to be intubated, you go ahead and have all your equipment and you might have an assistant closer to the head of the patient. In this case, you go ahead and patient is positioned like this. Our mask can come off with our strap over there. Patient's head is right there. And so we go ahead and scissor using our finger we open the patient's mouth is pretty much what scissoring is. And so we open the patient's mouth like that. And once we have the patient's mouth open, we'll go ahead and take our blade, which we tested already to make sure it works and there is a light. So 
we hold the blade in our left hand and with our right hand scissor in the patient's mouth you go ahead and place the blade gently in your patient's mouth while avoiding the teeth once you place the blade from the right you go ahead and sweep this way to the left meaning you sweep the tongue out of the way and that gives you a visual sight that aligns your three axes oropharyngeal, pharyngeal and laryngeal axis so once you sweep the tongue you go ahead and put the blade in until you see the vallecular your vallecular is the space right above your epiglottis and you would use that by lifting that vallecular up it reveals the glottic opening once you have the glottic opening in place you hold your blade in place and so this again is our glottic opening so right here is where you're going to place your tube right there so the blade helps reveal the glottic opening and then with your right hand you grab your endotracheal tube take it out of the packet and you hold it almost like a pen like way and with the with the um, blade in place still intact avoiding the lips and tongue you go ahead and advance this tube into our patient so advance into the patient and put it through the glottic opening once I'll take out the tube here so you can see what it looks like the endotracheal tube so and the tracheal tube is it looks just like this and it's and the syringe is connected so this goes into the glottic opening and this balloon pad passes through the glottic opening once it passes through the glottic opening you'll be able to inflate it so this is the inflation once you inflate it it goes this way inflating the tube gives you that much so about 5 to 10 cc's this will be suspended below, beneath the glottic opening and once that's the you go ahead and so this goes in through the glottic opening once you immediately pass the glottic opening you go ahead and remove this stylet or somebody helps you remove it once the stylet is out that's when you go ahead and inflate so this is inflated and then it stays in place and you hold and secure wherever it is at the at the lip you hold that in place so you go ahead and squeeze our green bag again and this time around we go through the final step which is confirmation ways to confirm would be and the end tidal co2 which will show up on your monitor you will see some condensation once you connect the circuit to the end of the of the tube you go ahead and see condensation in the in the tube you would also watch for chest rise and fall in the patient additionally you will also listen for breath sounds so if this is connected so this is what it looks like when inside of the patients so this is the the circuit is connected it's already inflated we take off our 10 cc syringe um, and that's that we tape in place our tube once we listen with our stethoscope and we see adequate tidal volumes on the ventilator so with our stethoscope we listen we listen bilaterally on both sides on both sides and you can also listen on the left to make sure that we're not main stemmed uh, meaning that the tube um, it was not advanced so far into the right side that only the right side of the lung gets oxygenation then we secure with a tape and then we turn on the ventilator before we pre-oxygenate we should and would have put some ointment in the patient's eye and or taped the eye securely this concludes the lesson 
on the placement of endotracheal intubation. We'll summarize with the steps. Preparation, patient positioning, pre-oxygenation, intubation, and confirmation of placement. Thank you for watching um, this presentation and video. Good luck.